Welcome to the AJ channel where we bring you more and more entertaining videos. We often discover topics that aim to keep you up to date and what our future may hold. That's why today we're going to tell you about the real problem with graphene. You already know about it, don't you? That so-called wonder material of the future? Since its discovery in 2004, graphene has quickly become the most famous of many countries around the world. It is considered to be one of the most incredible materials created by man since the plastic revolution more than a century ago. A million times smaller than a human hair and 200 times stronger than steel, it has been called the wonder material, a name that reflects what it can do for our future. According to scientists' predictions, this brand new element will turn the world's materials field upside down. It'll be a pillar of the future projects and technologies, but unfortunately, contrary to the hopes and promises that have been made, projects around the graphy have also been slow to materialize. More than a decade and a half has now passed and we still don't see tangible products designed with this material. Questions have been asked. Some even think that a massive disappointment. But why do you think that is? It's time we get the truth about this so-called material of the future. Let's get started. Actually, the questions swirling around graphy are not surprising, especially since the materials was created by humans and is said to have extraordinary properties. For some time now, scientists have been predicting that it is very near future that it will greatly disrupt the industrial sector. It will be integrated in several fields, ranging from electronics to aurora space. But even if today, the process has not yet been put into the sight of everyone, researchers are slowly starting to make progress with graphy. Before we look together what this material can do, let's first remind ourselves what it really is and why there is so much interest in it. As we just saw in one of the previous videos, graphy is a single layer of graphite. For those who don't know yet, graphite is a material that can be used to make pencil leads. Graphite actually has a two-dimensional crystal structure, while graphite is three-dimensional. This means, among other things, that it only has one atom. The atoms of graphite are arranged in a hexagonal fashion. Such a structure allows the material to conventionally bond each of the carbon atoms to make up its molecule, and it is indeed this bonding strength that makes it so strong and solid. But that's not all. Graphite is also characterized by its ability to decolonize electrons. This means that the electrons can move freely, which makes the material a good electrical and thermal conductor. In fact, it is probably the most conductive material ever discovered by man. But, if graphite has all these capabilities, why aren't we using it in everyday technologies and products? To answer this question, we'll have to review how it is extracted and the manufactured. In fact, when graphite was first isolated, scientists found that the resulting material is very thin. This is due to the extraction process, which is very complex and energy intensive. But the problem is not the, about the quantity. The question for them was how to produce graphene in a significant quantities, but with guaranteed quality. Mass production of this material is certainly very difficult and expensive, at least for the time being. If the resulting product is not a good quality, then why get it? It would have the same potential as other materials today and would not make any difference in terms of efficiency. As an example, scientists have estimated that silicone would be one of the first elements of graphene will replace. Yes, it is an excellent semiconductor that we can currently use in our video electronic devices. We find it on our smartphones, computers, or even on our children's toys. If it's a reliable material, then why waste our time replacing it? Given the cost of manufacturing graphene, it really would have to be an exceptional quality for it to interest investors. However, a new approach to producing this metal called flash graphene is attracting researchers. It consists of extracting graphene from the waste that we throw away every day. For example, plastic, glass, or rubber. It turns out the materials with a high carbon content can be converted into graphene. This would indeed be a real progress for technology sector and initiative to follow the face of the current climate change. In any case, graphene research is not about to stop here. Although not yet mature, this brand of new material could change our future lives forever. In fact, technologies made from this material are now being tested to test in its potential. Through these tests, scientists will be able to draw circular data about its true potential. They are the only ones who can tell us what will happen to this material. Imagine, planes, cars, batteries, or even computers made from graphene. It will probably be the best technology that man has ever been able to design from scratch. Technology is the combined strength and power, but patience, the projects around this material will surely take time to materialize. On the other hand, serious questions have arisen concerning its effects on health and the environment. Studies on its toxicity have shown that graphene could disturb living cells like carbon nanotubes and other nanomaterials. Nanomaterials, prized for their unique properties, have risen concerns about the potential toxicity. Carbon nanotubes have been derided in some studies, but according to recent Brown University study, graphene is also toxic. 
However, the fact remains that many other substances are also toxic. Lead, cadmium, and mercury are all on this list, and they already circulate in the production of semiconductors. The important thing is therefore to tame graphene and control its use, or to review the modeling to reduce its toxicity. So the unique thing about nanomaterials is that you can design them with specific desirable properties. These toxicity studies of graphene are actually made prelude to developing safe methods of its production and control. In fact, during the pandemic, action was taken on the other concerns about the material. Indeed, in April 2021, the Canadian authorities withdrew the marketing certainties references of FFP2 graphene masks. The reason given was a potential pulmonary risk related to the inhalation of graphene particles according to the ANSYS. Following this decision, the French authorities also suspended their distribution. The expert report of ANSYS on the substance concluded that it was impossible to assess the health risk of graphene, and due to this lack of information on graphene used by the manufacturer. The lack of information in the rate of toxicity of the substance, especially in the long term, were also mentioned. In 2015, the CNRS summarized the work in progress, stating that directly toxic of graphene continues to be demonstrated. And for that matter, its genotoxicity has not been demonstrated either. While waiting to learn more, the ENSYS recommends that the public authorities give performance to the sale of the supply of graphene free masks. Do you think that graphene is really toxic to health or to the environment? Tell us what you think in the comments. That's it folks, we're coming to the end of our video. I hope all the questions that plagued you about graphy have now been answered. If you like this video, please visit our channel to discover more interesting ones. And if you have any questions, please leave us a comment. And above all, we invite you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our topics. See you soon on ATEC.